Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make some Christmas door cards today using the Shut the Front Door die set from Lawn Fawn and a couple of their other stamp sets for this year. And the die set has the steps and the doorknob and everything as well as the door. And this is a card that most people would make showing the outside of the card and then peeking into the inside of the house and using the steps and gluing the steps on, etc. And what I did with this one is I colored all of my Copic markers and I didn't like how it colored it. So I put a bunch of distressed, <laughs> distress spray stain over it and it made a blizzard. And then no one's going to care that I didn't like my coloring. On the inside, I used the Christmas Dreams set. It has lots of different things. You can put a Christmas tree in there. You can put lots of different things in the scene. And I just used the fireplace and the little puppy and the gifts and some candles up on top of the fireplace to make a little scene. And that's what most people are going to do. They're going to color the outside of it and then peek on into the inside of a house. I'm going to do the opposite for our card today. I'm using the Winter Village and I'll use a sentiment from that. And I'm going to put the Winter Village on the inside. So you're going to be looking from the inside of the house to the outside. So if you have some little people that you want to put out there, little animals that are caroling, that would be really fun to put on the inside of the window that you're going to create on this card. When you die cut it, it's going to make the door at this rectangle, but it's going to leave an empty door in the piece of paper that you die cut it in. So if you cut it in the center, then you can use that panel the way I'm going to. But what I'm doing is coloring what looks like a hot mess. I know it looks like a hot mess. Everybody breathe. Don't freak out yet. I know some of you are probably screaming. I get comments in my, my videos sometimes that you're like, oh my gosh, what's she doing? Oh, okay. So don't panic yet. I'm going to just make some wood out of this by doing a bunch of scribbled lines and I drew some knots in some of the boards and stuff. If you don't like how that looks, if it still looks too scribbly to you, then color a darker color. Just cover it up more. It's going to soften the lines that are behind it and make it look like darker wood. So you can start with lighter and then just get slowly darker until the, the door looks like the kind of wood that you want. Since you're going to open this, you're going to want to color the other side too. It's less important than the front side, of course, because people aren't going to be staring at that side. But you could certainly do that. And by the way, you can actually cut out some, you know, die cut some, some little wreaths and things to hang on the door. You can put lights on it. You can decorate it any old way you want, whatever you'd like to do. But I'm just going to use plain wooden doors on this particular one because I'm going to try to keep it fairly simple given the rest of the card is a little on the complex side. So doesn't that look like a nice door? I think that looks pretty cool. Then there's these little teeny tiny pieces, little itty bitties, and it's basically the panel that the doorknob goes on, and I'm gonna use a little bit of glossy accents and my quick stick pickup thing, I never remember what it's called, to glue those on. And of course I did that off camera, <laughs> so you don't get to see that part, but I'm sure you can use your imagination to figure out how I glued those on. The inside here now, I you can see that pencil line. I took the panel that I had die cut my door out of and just made the pencil line on the inside so I know where to stamp the scene. So I stamped a whole bunch of the stars and the moon with that one little line of buildings. And I did have to take my pen and extend it a little bit to make sure it goes outside of that line. Part of the door frame is gonna cover it up, but I just wanted to make sure that my coloring goes all the way outside to uh, to be able to do this. And then I'm just going to use some random browns. You can color your buildings, of course, in any colors you want. I'm not doing any shading on any of this because it's an interactive card. People are going to be looking at a lot more things than whether or not you shaded all of this properly. So just have fun with it and do some fun colors, whatever kind you want. You can make them little gingerbread -y looking houses. You can make them realistic. You can make them fantasy looking. And then I just added a couple of blues to the snow. A little bit shading on the snow on the roofs, but just left some really simple color down there at the bottom. Now you can see the panel that I cut the door out of. That's going to be the inside of the house. So I turned it over. I'm not sure why I turned it over because it would work both ways. <laughs> you know, it's plain white paper. But anyway, I turned the front door over as well so that we're looking at the back side and I'm going to tape down with just a piece of scotch, a couple pieces of scotch tape, three sides of the door, because there's three sides of the door jam. So I want that to be flush with the front piece. 
oh, on the card. And so I'm just going to tape them all down real carefully. Don't pay any attention to my dirty fingerprints on my tape because that's kind of how things go when we're crafting. And, you know, look, there's an extra piece of cardstock that got under that piece of tape. Nobody's going to know, right? Well, you're going to know, but you can't tell anybody, okay? If you get this Christmas card from me, no tearing it apart to find that little thing. So I used a block to just kind of bend that door because I forgot to get it, you know, kind of started so that it, it opens nicely. But now you can see when I put it over top of that panel I colored, how nicely that little scene is going to show through. Now you can choose to just have the white paper or cut it out of whatever color paper you want for the front of the card, but I thought it would be fun to make it look like it's the inside of a home. So I picked a color for the carpet and I decided on a blue. Not sure why I decided blue. I'm not sure I've ever seen a house with this kind of blue carpet, but there you go. And then I put red wallpaper on the walls. And you can also see that that's red paint. But if you are anything like me and have trouble with trying to get a large flood of color to be good and even, then I'm going to show you a trick at the end of the video for fixing that. So most of the time to try to get it even, I just go over it many times and make sure your marker's good and juicy. If you start getting streaks, a lot of it's because your marker's just not juicy enough. But just keep going over it and over it and over it. And that's one reason why people don't like to do seams in the back because you do have to go over them a few times. And what I'm going to do next now is I'm running some of the Be Creative tape all along the edges and I'm putting it around that the back of the door jam because I want that door jam securely onto the back of the card or the back the front of the panel that I colored because then I don't want that popping up. I want the door to open nicely. And then I put some skinnier Be Creative tape all the way around the outside edge. You can also use some kind of tape runner whenever you use. But I find that the Be Creative tape is so sticky that when I have an interactive card and I don't want it to fall apart while they're opening and closing and opening and closing because you know you're going to get a kid who's going to come over and want to play with it and stuff so it'll hold it together better. So now I can just take that panel, stick it upside down, that's my house panel that I colored, and line it up and it should all work just fine when I turn it over and you can see that little, little scene appears in the middle. Isn't that cute? So now, in order to make the wallpaper look like wallpaper and disguise the fact that I did not have really good success in coloring my background, I'm taking a white Sharpie. Yes, there is a white Sharpie. I showed you this recently for making snow. When you make lines like this, it doesn't show up very much, but look how nice it makes sort of the ribbing on wallpaper and gives it a little bit of texture without giving it too much. And it softens as it dries, so it just gives you that really nice, real soft look. So there is the finished card, which I think came out stinking cute for being something that was as quick and easy as it was. I thought this was going to be a harder card, but a couple of browns to color that door. Do your scene real quick, and you can even have the kids help you decorate the outside. You could use patterned paper for the outside and make some really pretty stuff, you know, like, like wallpaper and things. And here's stills again of the one where I colored my crazy wild bricks that don't actually line up. I hope that no one lives in that house because the bricks might fall off. But I still liked it because it came out really cute with the little puppy inside. So I hope you enjoy this video that you might try making some Christmas door cards for yourself. When No, don't make them for yourself. Make them for somebody else. That's what we make cards for, to give to somebody else. Here's some more videos if you want to watch some more stuff and you can always check out more on my blog and there's pinnable cards over there if you want something to stick on your Pinterest. I'll see you later.